Hey, what's up? Gonna cover installing NetBSD inside of VirtualBox. And if you're good with other virtual machine programs, then you could probably abstractly apply this as well. I think I've installed NetBSD maybe once. I've installed Minix a couple times that somewhat uses uh, NetBSD for the user land stuff. So uh, I'm not super versed in it, but I was at this page and this cool college course is based on um, NetBSD. That's what they use. So I thought, uh, I'll, I'll install it again, whatever, kick it around again. So I thought I'd share that process for people who maybe are trying to get into like checking out other operating systems and stuff like that. Maybe you've checked out Linux. Maybe you haven't. NetBSD is really similar. Um, they're both a Unix-like. But, of course, once you start getting down to the nitty-gritty, some stuff tends to veer off and some stuff tends to overlap. There's a lot of BSD influence in Linux, and I'm pretty sure at this point there's even a fair amount of Linux influence in BSD. I thought I remembered some examples, but it's been a while. All right. So this is a Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. You can just go to virtualbox.com or .org or whatever and whatever it is and download that. I have version 6. Um, the latest version 5 would probably be fine as well. If you happen to be one of the rare people that's still on a 32-bit computer, then you'll need to get the 32-bit version of 5. And you'll also make sure to get 32-bit versions of whatever operating systems you can, which is getting very hard these days. There's very few operating systems that are still 32-bit, but they're out there. And a lot of the, about half of the really good operating systems are still 32-bit. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here to create a new system. I guess I can click in one of these sections to kind of like steer where it gets created. And then I can name it, I'll just call it NetBSD, since I don't have a lot of NetBSDs on here. It's a BSD. 64-bit. Okay, that all looks good. Um, this is where it's going to save like the virtual hard disk and whatever, which can grow easily to several gigabytes or more. So, um, you know, if that's an issue, you might want to place it somewhere else or if you just don't like the default folder. There's a gigabyte of RAM. I noticed on this example over here that, of course, they click on this link right here to download the ISO image. And this is apparently the most recent one at this time of recording. They name it Apu, which I really like that. Uh, and yeah, that's the settings I just showed you there. So following along, let's just walk right through it. All right, they have enable IO pick checked. I'll go ahead and create the virtual hard disk. So we have one gig of RAM, which should be totally fine from a lot of console stuff, as long as you're not like just really trying to to run it hot. Um, otherwise, you might want to pit two gigs or more, and especially if you plan on doing any graphical environments. All right, so now we've got this checked in the middle to uh, create a virtual hard disk. That's actually the next phase. So right here, we can see it says 16 gigabytes, but since it's dynamically allocated, you could just hit create, and that should be fine. 16, that's pretty good middle of the road for a little virtual machine or whatever. Um, I'm kind of cheap, so I just usually take them down to... I mean, like I said, it's going to start at zero and just expand as much as it needs, but it doesn't automatically contract. So I'm just going to set like a reasonable limit so that if something goes wrong, if this virtual hard drive fills up um, and the drive that I have it stored on, I'd rather that the virtual hard drive, especially in this circumstance where it's like a throwaway machine, so to speak, I'd rather that that machine's hard drive filled up and crashed than my host system. Because if the host system drive fills up and crashes, then all the systems are going down most likely. Okay, so dynamic, go ahead and virtual box disk image. I did about seven and a half gigs. Okay, which should be more than double what we'll need for this little tutorial. All right, there it is. NetBSD powered off, blah, blah, blah. So what we need to do is we can either right click it and go to settings right there or just make sure it's highlighted and click settings right here. And that. We'll take it sweet time and then it will pop up another little window with if you need to correct any of that stuff. Um, these other tabs, I'm just 
I think they're all cool for now. I'll give it two processors, whatever. And just leave everything else at the defaults. Because it usually will pick kind of sensible defaults. Almost too safe a defaults usually. Like if you pick Linux, maybe it's 32-bit. I don't know. It will still pick IDE drives instead of SATA controller. So I just, I don't know. I feel like, really? So this hardware clock in UTC time, if you're on Windows like I am, then you'll probably want to uncheck that. If you're on Linux as your host system, then you'll probably want to leave it checked. Because Windows tends to use your local time and Linux tends to use the universal time. All right, 16 megs of video memory sounds good to me. I've got it on W, or excuse me, VMS VGA, which I think was added in VirtualBox 6. So you might have like VBox VGA, whatever. That should be fine. Um, I wouldn't enable any acceleration or anything out the gate on this. I'll just, I guess I'll just run through it and do my, the way I'll do it, and then I'll double check it against their settings. Okay, what am I looking for here? Where did I put it? I'm going to pause the video and find that you'll hardly notice it. Hey, what do you know? It was right there, already in the right folder. Okay, so there it is. I have the NetBSD 9.2 AMD ISO. I, I'm pretty sure it downloads as ISO. Of course, if it doesn't, you need to unzip it. I downloaded it earlier. All right, so we have an IDE controller. Should be fine. We have um, that in the disk, the, the optical drive. And then we have this hard drive we just created. It's about 7.5 gigabytes. And the actual size is only 2 gigabytes right now. And it will, of course, dynamically grow. That's where it's at. Da, 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 da. And, you know, in theory, you could disconnect this and move it to another drive and then reconnect it all through this same interface and stuff. And that should be transparent to the virtual machine as long as, you know, everything's like this and not in a running state. Okay, let's go over here and look what they have for this stuff. They put in their stuff. So they jump straight down to network. And we're going to put it on bridged. I don't like NAT. I don't know why that's the default, but whatever. Um, and then they leave it on Intel Pro 1000. It says select the first adapter. Keep it as NAT. Select advanced and select port for. Oh, this is for the SSH thing. I don't. I don't think we need to do that. Um. Anyway, I always put it on bridged, if I remember. Click OK. Um, let's see what else there is. Make sure. USB 2. Kind of iffy. Hmm. So I've got it on USB 1.1 just to be safe. That should work with mice or keyboards or whatever. Basic kind of stuff maybe some really old slow drives and stuff um i definitely wouldn't do 3.0 until you know for sure that works yeah so all that should be good we'll hit okay to save and then we should just be able to double click it Oh, it looks like you can set like a permanent scale factor in there. I did not know that. I don't think, not in the graphical user interface that I knew of. So we go to display, where's that at? Mon scale factor, I never, <laughs> I've never noticed that. What a trip. So I can demonstrate how that could come in handy. Start your newly created VM, which we did here. Oh, it's so dumb when it does this. So the newest virtual boxes will pop up this select startup disk, and it's like I've already manually inserted a startup disk. So I just really, this step didn't used to happen on the older versions, so it's annoying. I'm going to hit cancel, and then it looks like maybe it should detect that CD that I put in there. Okay, so... 
we'll just let it do its thing. You could probably just hit enter. Only takes a few seconds. All right. Mouse doesn't work. If you happen to click on it and your mouse gets stuck in there, just hit the right control key or the equivalent on whatever system you have. That's called the host key in uh, VirtualBox. So like I could hit hold down the right control key and hit F and that goes full screen. It might not stretch to full screen, but it will at least take over the whole screen. And I can hit right control um, F again to switch back to that mode. I can hit control, I think it's C to go to that scaled mode that I was talking about. And then if I hit maximize, you can see it automatically scales. So that's pretty nice. And then there's uh, the control L, but that's more for like the graphical interfaces if they have the extensions installed and stuff. Let's see, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit control F to go full screen twice and then back. I don't think there's a shortcut to get back to this normal mode right here. So you just have to like, switch into some other mode and then hit the same thing to switch back out of it and you should end up in this like default mode and if it's all weird looking you can hit adjust window size and it should like resize itself to be all tight like this but i'm going to do this so we can see both of them and it should be pretty straightforward most of these kind of installs are you just english or your language obviously and it looks like the top choice just enter 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 just like any good install program should be you have chosen to install it this will change information on your hard disk it's going to wipe stuff out is what it's telling you or at least overwrite the configurations that might be there right so after you enter this information but before your disk you will have the opportunity to quit this procedure shall we continue yes looks like i have my screens like i was saying you hit right control key to get the mouse back if it's trapped i'm going to uh i'm going to hit right control c to get to the scale mode then i'm going to do that Okay, whatever. All right, so WD0, that's how uh, NetBS, modern NetBSD says your first hard drive on that controller, on that IDE controller, whatever. So, yeah, we'll pick that. Guide GUID partition table or master boot record. So GUID, that's going to be like more of that, um, the UEFI style BIOS thing. And the master boot record is going to be the whole rest of computer history before that. So... Basically, if your computer was bought after 2010 new, then there's like whatever percent chance, right, that it's you, like 100% chance probably, that's UEFI. Um, but yeah, we're in VirtualBox, so it doesn't even really matter. Like, we can even, we should be able to just do the old school one. Is this correct geometry? Sure. That's the worst thing they can do is ask math problems. Okay, edit the MBR partition table. Use the entire disk. Delete everything. I'm going to use the entire disk. Let's see what they say. Use the entire disk. Okay. Um, they say default partition sizes. I'm going to set them. This is the thing that I was worried about. So this, I don't like this, especially in a virtual machine. Like for one, I don't like swap. How do I delete it? I just hit enter on it. Size for megabytes, zero. Okay, um, I don't need a temp. This is just ridiculous complexity in my opinion. I mean, it keeps like, that way if temp overfills, it doesn't like fill up your whole hard drive, crash the system, it will just overfill temp and ideally maybe get some warning or something. But uh, yeah, for a single, like just a single virtual machine, just to toy around on, I don't like to be constricted and have all this extra complexity and stuff like that. I just like to give it all to the root partition. And I guess it's this choice, go on free space or. Is that, wait. <laughs> This is bad. This is so ugly. Free space. Okay, whatever. Whole disk. Whoa, what is going on here? 
I can't believe it's like they go out of their way to make this kind of stuff complex. So you're seeing me deal with it for the first time. I've never been here. We now have your disk label partitions for WD0 below. This is your last chance to change them. Flags, new file system total, da da da. Like, you know, maybe just a few words of some effing freaking online help right here would help. Like, you know, I'm fairly computer savvy, but they've already got me feeling in a corner. I've got these DOS looking disk drives, which I can select one of, and the other ones are just there. Okay, change input, unit selectors, edit name of disk, clone external, partition. Okay, gigabytes over there I see on the far right. Oh my god, really? Um, cancel. Install NetBSD to hard disk. Shall we continue? Sure. I'm not mad. I'm just very upset. Okay, let's try the GPT. No, actually, yeah, that's correct. Maybe this will cause some technical difficulty with VirtualBox. I think I hit it. Oh, no. Okay. Says the sizes. Am I freaking out? You can use a simple editor to... Uh, da, da, da. It's like my eyes glaze over. I'm trying to read this. Set sizes of NetBSD partition. Yeah. Okay. They win. Use default sizes. Sure. Waste a gigabyte of a swap file we're not going to use. No, we shouldn't. Don't let him win. Go back through it. Change it. Master boot record. Correct geometry. We're going to use the entire disk. Set sizes. So what do we got here? We got... Free space, four gigabytes at the very bottom. Okay, so that did work. I wasn't watching that number. I didn't know I was supposed to watch that number while I was doing this. So I'm going to hit enter on that and hit zero. Oh, we got five gigabytes now. Hit enter and zero them all out. And what should happen is what it's going to do, it, it will still create those folders. They'll just be on the same slice of the hard disk as uh, this root partition up here. Oops. Okay. How do we get this thing back to a lot of gigabytes? Am I on the wrong drive or I might be on the wrong drive. So not user friendly. And then what you have to do to cancel it is go on and then cancel it right here. I'd love to give somebody a free class on some user interface design and I'm not even properly schooled on it. But a little bit of uh, common sense goes a long way, I've been told. Oh, there it was. I just said edit. Add a partition. Not onto that A drive. Onto... Wait, okay, those aren't A drives. Those aren't DOS drives. Those are shortcut keys that you can press with the keyboard, apparently. That makes sense now. Okay, change input units. Okay, it's saying seven gigabytes. <laughs> I get it. All right. Um, change the inputs. Partition table. Okay, quick run. Do you want to re edit? No. Do you want to install it? Yeah. What would you like to do? Help. Um,. I just set the sizes, didn't I? You gotta be kidding me. This is really good for getting the uh, that feeling, that shitty feeling. That's why I wanted to make this video because I knew that like this could happen like this to people because I've been here a thousand times in the past, but. I figured that I would take it a little bit more smoothly, but I feel like I'm taking it really bad. So I have to imagine maybe I'm helping a few people that are like really already have their hair ripped out and a couple holes in the wall next to them. Okay. Size in gigabytes. Okay. Apparently it is in 
gigabytes because it's in parentheses, that 7. Maybe if they could put the F and GB right next to the 7, that would be a lot handier. Okay. Sure. No, free space, 5 gigabytes. So that's only 2 gigabytes. What? This... Why are they going to do that? That makes me think the size is 2 of whatever they mean, like some block format, and then gigabytes in parentheses is 7. Like That's what I'm led to believe when I see that. But maybe they're telling me I'm using 2 of 7 possible gigabytes. So I'm going to hit 7 right here. Yay, zero gigabytes free. Partition sizes are okay. They're the best they've ever been. Shall we continue? No. Yeah. Use BIOS console. No wonder I love Linux and hate BSD and never install it. Full installation, install without X. So X win X11 is the windowing system. If you do an installation without it, then you'll just have the command prompt. So especially if this was a real virtual machine in the cloud, you probably wouldn't want X, what they call X. Um, but you might want parts of it because you can actually run X Windows from a remote machine really well. And you were able to for decades ago, unlike Windows, where just in the last decade or two, they finally got it together. Uh, Linux and these Unix likes have been really good at that. And then there's these minimal custom installations, which I have no idea. I can't tell you about a minimal I because they don't tell you any detail and I don't know anything. Um, I would assume that that would be just pretty much the bare bones with like some console text editor and stuff. So like if you really want to be on your own to like maybe even install networking, I don't know because they're so freaking vague that they feel like it's illegal to give somebody too much information here. I'm doing a full install. Install from a CD drive, right? We stuck a CD in there. But shouldn't it be smart enough to know? All the Linux distros are by now to know that, like, okay, I'm going to install the core off the CD and then I'm going to hit the net if it's available to uh, do everything else. I guess I should read their directions. Your disk is now ready for installing the kernel and the distribution sets. Hopefully you know what those words mean. As noted in your install notes, you have several options. For FTP or NFS, more words, hopefully you know what they mean, you must be connected to a network with access to the proper machines. Sets selected 16, process 0, next set, current, what? My God, who does this make sense to? Like, is there like three people on the planet that speak this language? As noted in your install notes, <laughs> thanks for using the few lines of text to tell me about something I didn't already, you know, I didn't read. Maybe it's my fault, but I feel like, give me a freaking break, how many billions of operations a second and we can't even, like, get a little bit of assistance here? All right, I'm just going to hit CD-ROM, screw it, and then we can run updates off the web or whatever later. All right, I'm going to pause it, maybe. I'm going to call me, maybe. It looks like it's going fast. I have to imagine, it's, what is it getting, comp.tar? Anyway, I'll pause it. There's probably going to be a, it's probably going to take minutes, plural. Right. The extraction of the selected sets for NetBSD-9.2 is complete. The system is now able to boot from the selected hard disk, or so they think. To complete the installation, sysinst will give you the opportunity to configure some essential things first. Hit enter to continue. Okay, I'm going to drag the bottom of this up a little bit and see if I get a little better of a ratio. Okay, configure the additional items as needed. Time zone is it confuses me with virtual box. I always forget. So if my system's not in universal time, do they convert it to universal time for Linux? Uh, I don't think they do. So I'm just going to get this off of UTC. Or no, it's actually, yeah. What am I, Pacific, US? 
Is that the right one? And then the escape key, of course, doesn't go back. That does. Okay, so what do I need here? U.S. U.S. Pacific. Am I on it? Yeah. Okay, up at the top we can see selected. Oh, wow, I hit the mouse. Um, UTC. Wait, default U. Dumb. Okay, U.S. Pacific. Dumb as me. But I just got to say that to them when they don't line up with my worldview. Okay. Root shell, sure. Change password, whatever. I usually just pick like a pin number for my little local virtual machines. Enter it twice. Wait. I'm trying to boss me around. And make You might have to enter it three times if you enter a short one like me. Today's just not my day. Yes. Um, enable installation of binary packages. Yeah, I get, do I click it? Um, enable binary package with package in, which is their package manager, um, or package in, I think it's short for package installer, requires so clever. Uh, setting up the repository, the following are the host, directory, user, and password that will be used. Quote unquote user is FTP, then the password is not needed. <laughs> like, if you're using FTP, we want to make sure and follow proper protocol and keep it as insecure as possible so we won't be setting a password. Cool. All right. By the way, use SFTP if you're still in some content management world or something. If you're using FTP, if your people are using FTP, I don't know what to tell you. Just click thumbs down on my video and go somewhere else. Or watch all my videos, one or the other. I love you. Okay. Seriously. Um, why are you looking at me like that? All right. Base directory. I mean, this stuff, it makes sense. Like if somebody's already an expert, like for the people that like the engineers that work on this, this is probably perfect for them. But for, I would imagine the majority of end users, it's probably mostly uh, half or more counterintuitive. So user and Linux isn't a much better, but at, Linux definitely see, has a more human element to it. Why do they have the user as FTP? That just blows my mind. Is that what people use BSD for now? Like, why don't they make the user BBS? Okay. And it's probably got to be all lowercase. Linux does. Password. Huh. They had me enter that password once. They didn't even have me confirm it. Proxy. Oh, wow. I'm putting in info for their uh, user FTP. Wow. I thought this was the setup for the freaking virtual machine. I didn't realize this. I wasn't getting it. I was thinking that they were saying that, you know, if I want to use this virtual machine as an FTP server, I could have a user FTP. And it's like, oh, now I get it. Like, they're trying to... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. When I record videos, in all honesty, I go like half or more dumb, but for some reason, I don't get it. But anyway, um, so that's probably a big factor. I imagine it's pretty obvious to everybody else. But anyway, let's see if I didn't screw it up too bad. I should just just hit enter. Hit enter to continue. That's bizarre looking. Package edition failed. Quit installing binary packages. This is not working. No, these are daemons for uh, which is services and Unix speak for SSH, which is a remote console. That's like this. Um, I can't remember what NTP stands for. Network time protocol. I think that's to set the clock. Yeah, this must check it at boot. I can't remember what these things are. That's X Display Manager. I believe, which is your auto login 
So if you want it to like automatically start X windows, then you would enable that. And that would ask you for your login info in the X windows interface instead of at the console, like a prettier look. LVMs for uh, multiple, it's a sort of like, it's not raid, but it's like if you want to like drag volumes across multiple partitions and stuff, it's just, if you needed it, you'd know it. Enable raid frame. That's weird. That's by default. Okay. Maybe I should have left it. Add a user? No, I'm scared to now. Uh, I'll say finished. Okay, let's try it. You want to upgrade it? Are you sure? Do you really want to upgrade it? Be real scared. We're going to really get asking weird questions. Which disk do you want to upgrade? Give me a break. Finished. Okay, that was easy. Why am I here? Why is it back to this? Reinstall sets or additional sets. Reboot the computer. I guess reboot. I don't know. I don't like reading directions. They're wrong half the time anyway. And I didn't take the disk out, so it's not doing a whole lot of good. So what I can do is I can hit control C and get back to that menu and then go to devices, optical, remove disk from virtual drive. And then who cares what they're doing? I'll just reset it because it's probably trying to boot off the disk, I'd imagine. Okay. So this should be the, the actual hard drive. You can see down there, there's nothing in the CD drive. It's grayed out. There it goes. I was wondering why that little indicator light wasn't kicked on. Well, that's cool. Apparently it installed. I wasn't even for sure that that happened. I don't know why he wants us to run all this said stuff. If you're connected to IP6 network, I'm not, thank God, after looking what that requires. You can now log in and verify network connectivity. All right, and we verify that network connectivity with the old school if config. If you're OG Linux, you'll remember that one. Minus A. All right, what do we see here? We've got the loop back and we've got our uh, our other thing, WM0, huh? Was that wireless, Eth ethernet? I call it ethernet. I don't believe in ether. And isn't it ironic that wireless runs on the ether and ethernet runs on the wire? Anyway, you could say that I kind of think about stuff sometimes. Set up SSH. Set up your C development environment. That's what we want. So. What is all this crap? Oh, they're setting up C flags. All this kind of like applies to Linux too. Now fetch the code. Oh, this is for this class. That's why that one's geared like that. I guess I should just stream these if I'm going to do them like this all non-pro. Okay. What am I doing? Do I just do a ping? DNS isn't set up. All right, so there's NetBSD, and here's how you remove your NetBSD virtual machine. When you're just over it, you just power off the machine, and you go in here, and you just right-click it and say remove, and you say delete all files to make sure and delete that stupid hard drive. You don't want that around, probably. And then there, it's gone, and we can just forget about it.
Oh, look at that. And then we can just boot back into like Debian or Arch or something real, a real man's operating system, as a woman might say. And, you know, then we just remember. That's why I, I like to install a lot of operating systems so I can remember why I use the few that I do, which includes DOS. So NetBSD is losing out over DOS with me right now. Anyway, thanks for watching.